you don't create joy, you don't give yourself joy, you receive joy. Write that down. You receive joy. That happens when you give your life to Christ. If you're in here and you're not serious about your faith, you'll never walk in the joy that God has for you. You never will be able to. Because apart from receiving Christ, apart from surrendering your life to him, your life will never be all that it was created to be. That's just a fact. 27 years following Jesus. But did you know, even after you give your life to Christ and you receive that first, you know, you have to continually receive joy from God. Look what Jesus says in John 15, 5, 9 through 11. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much. Everyone say much. Yeah. Much fruit. Because you can do nothing without me. Verse nine. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. I love this. Listen. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. You know what he's just saying here? Love is way more than a feeling. It's way more than a situation where you want to. He says how you cultivate and remain in the love of God is keep doing what he says. Another place, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. That's about action. Our world is about virtue signaling with their mouth. God says, no, 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 no. You should be doing something with your life. Just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I love Jesus. He said, I do it with my father. You can do it with me. That's what he says. I have told you these things that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Complete. Jesus alone, you've got to learn to receive joy. Next, you've got to learn to choose joy. I said this last week in Belton, but I'm sure Pastor Luis said it here. Okay, joy is the birthright of every Christian. Did you know you can have a benefit or a right, but not know it or not acknowledge it? You have to choose joy. It's not always obvious, you know? It's like there's a reason why we have 17 cans of black beans in my, it's because every time we say, hey, we're making tacos, and my wife says, hey, do we have any black beans? I go to the pantry, and they're covered up by all this other junk that shouldn't even be there, half eaten this and spoiled that, and I can't see anything, and I say, no, honey, let's get another, let's, let's, let's door dash, let's, let's, you know, Walmart, deliver it. A lot of times we can't choose joy because our life's too cluttered with stuff that shouldn't belong there. You know, there's an order for you to live your life. There's an order. And you have to learn to choose it because you won't wake up naturally thinking about it. I don't wake up just, you know, first of all, I don't wake up, I don't, when I, listen, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about any of you. <laughs> don't look at me in that tone of voice. You're not, <laughs> if you're thinking about me, you need some counseling. Think about this for a minute. We wake up in our flesh, the Apostle Paul says, what we want to do, how we feel, what we think, our perspective, right? You have to choose something different. And you have to, that's a discipline. That's not something that just happens. That's a discipline. It's, it's not just you receive it, but you, you, you choose it in a disciplined fashion. Psalm 118, 24, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. Thank you. Yeah, so church does work. So I've, church does work. You know, we want to throw it away. All those traditions don't mean anything. No, they do mean something, right? Because when you're at your rock bottom, you return to what you know. That's the power of having your kids in church. And that's way more powerful than a soccer tournament. Can I just tell you that? Yes. I pick on soccer because, but it could be anything. We can choose. This is the day the Lord's made. We're in it. We're here. It's not just an emotion, joy is a choice. Finally, and I'm gonna end on this. Maybe I, I ended 37 seconds early last time. So I'm gonna take back that time and maybe add a couple minutes for you guys. <laughs> so we've gotta learn to give joy, write that down. We are born into this world selfish, but when we're born again, we're born generous. There's something in us that changes when you give your life to Christ. You know, I've, I've watched this over the years. This is the most, this is so counterintuitive. When you have pain, right? When you have crazy expectations. When you're, when you're struggling with, you know, comparison. The last thing you want to do is the first thing you must do. The last thing you want to do 
is do anything for anyone but yourself. Here's what you want to do. And this is our whole world is built. This is why there are places in the world where the poverty is so bad, they literally do not know where their next meal is coming from. And yet they're happy. They don't struggle with depression, anxiety, fear. And yet in our culture where we have everything we want, and you may be thinking that you're oppressed, but the fact that you're in here sitting up, that's garbage. Just look around the rest of the world. 